really, uh, really, really happy for my team and really proud of them. They, uh, they fought hard and they played hard today from the very beginning to the end. Um, they supported each other. They played complimentary football and, and they decided um, that they wanted to be different and play different than they had the last two weeks. And uh, there was plenty of chances for it to go any direction this game. <laughs> And they just kept uh, coming back. And I, I'm so happy for them. I'm really appreciative of the work that they've put in and the trust they've placed in me to, to believe that um, we could be a postseason team and, and beyond. And, and it's gratifying to see, to see them happy. It's really gratifying. And um, just right off the bat, Joe Reed, I think, was an, a huge influence on the game. Lester Coleman was a huge influence on the game from the special team standpoint. We overcame a block punt. Um, Kurt Bankert down the stretch um, was exceptional. And the throws he was making and the connections we were making on the big plays, which we've been struggling with, it was, uh, I might be happiest for him. Um, really liked the resiliency of, uh, of our team and um, what they earned today uh, in terms of a chance to keep playing. So I'll take questions. Is it, uh, is it any more satisfying to win that way, given how much you've talked about resilience and the important to come from behind twice like that, particularly on the final drive? I just, uh, it's exhausting is what it is. Um, <laughs> And, and I, I think maybe that makes it more satisfying just because there, I don't know what else you can give. You know, <laughs> there's, there's no more, and um, at least not today. And that's when you give everything that you have as a coach or a player or a person and, and it works in your favor. Yeah, it's a good feeling. And there was a stretch of the second quarter. We had five straight incompletions, but then fourth quarter at the game on the line, yeah. you, you go right back to Kurt. What, what gave you that confidence? It's crazy. Um, I mean, literally, for it to look like that and then look like that. Um, just, I think the rain and the weather had partly to do with it or something to do with it, but I'd, um, I won't remember anything other than the end, to be honest. And I'm not sure anyone should. Um, those those kind of comebacks, they don't happen very often, and I don't get I don't get to be part of many things like that, and and so yeah, there's a lot we can improve, but we also um, made a, made enough plays to to win the game. You, you talked uh, earlier in the week and at midweek about the fact that you were going to talk about the possibility of becoming bowl eligible. Did you talk about it during the game, before the game, today, mm -hmm. at halftime, after the game, how much? We started, uh, started on Monday and just uh, it, it, had, it had reached the point where it was so pervasive in terms of the, the pressure that our team was placing on themselves and it was just, it was, became so evident after the pit game that I had to do something different. And so uh, we hit it almost every day this week in a team meeting, including last night, I addressed the team in the locker room. And, uh, and I, I can't say that that's the reason um, that anything was different, uh, but ha something had to be done. And so rather than, and I wasn't saying it that this win equals that, it's just, we already know that. So now that that's the case, now what do we really have to do and where does our mind have to be and how do we need to perform and with what mindset and, and um, they, they played exactly as I would have hoped today in terms of just, um, I, I think, fearless. Uh, they just surrendered the outcome and went out and played. And that, that was pretty cool. Coach, you've, you've coached teams that earned bowl eligibility before. That's not, this is not new for you. But where does this feeling that you're feeling right now, where does that oh, rank? Man. Uh, That's, that's hard to say. Um, I'm not sure there's anything that feels better than this right now. Um, I love every team that I coach. And these guys have tried really hard for a year and a half um, just to be noticed. <laughs> and um, a lot of times they don't feel so much noticed and it's, that it's just them. And um, they, 
they have a special place um, in my heart, and uh, they've earned that, and um, I'm lucky I could work with them. Bronco, uh, I think when you first got here, you were talking about uh, how you guys, the kind of culture you wanted to put here, uh, similar to BYU, and uh, you said you hope to show us someday a film of, of what that looked like. Is this what it looks like? Did this remind you of those comebacks in wild scoring games it, it, at BYU? It, it, it just reminded me. Um, I think that the, the score is, is one thing. And um, if, if what I was hoping to show meant um, at, uh, people that won't quit, um, that, that will support and believe in each other and try as hard as they can, then yeah, I think this was pretty close. Um, Again, there's all kinds of things that can be improved, but you have to kind of have, have it look like this first before it looks something else. And that's, again, I, I, think, I think the bottom line is until you just surrender the outcome of what this might look like and just throw your whole heart and soul into every play, you don't have a chance for it to look any different at the end in terms of the outcome. And I think that's about as close as that I've ever been part of today. Um, of a group of guys just throwing their bodies around and really supporting and really wanting for each other to have success. Bronco, how big an impact did Juan Thornhill's return have on what you were able to do defensively? It's, it's huge. Um, I mean, as you can see, they, uh, other than, man, that first play right after halftime, um, we had a pretty good idea of handling the run game. Um, and the way that we play it, it puts a lot of pressure on the secondary. And so to have one more really good player to, to put a burden on his shoulders is really an experienced player and a quality player was really helpful. And um, it, it allowed us to actually play a scheme and a manner in which we wanted to play. Uh, without that, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Bronco back, back here. Um, usually after a game, it's on to the next one, never too high, never too low. But obviously, that's not the case today. How important is it to allow yourself, these guys, allow everybody to savor a moment like this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to, to frame the answer of how important, but it is important. And um, we Monday morning at 5:30 or five, whatever, it'll come soon enough. But. Um, to, to have asked and trusted and have these guys work as hard as they have, um, it, it's not business as usual right now for this program. I mean, let's be honest. This is not business as usual for, at UVA. Um, otherwise, we'd be a bowl team every year, and I wouldn't be here. Um, these guys have worked really hard, and they, they ought to have today and tomorrow at least to just yeah enjoy what they've done and then Monday we'll we'll uh, assess whomever we play next <laughs> that sounds funny doesn't it how much does this feel like the last three games now you guys are freed up to kind of play free in those in, in, in those three games and how much does it feel like maybe this accelerates that whole mindset thing that you've been working on since you got mm -hmm. here. I, I'm not sure uh, um, about that yet. Um, we'll just uh, we'll just see on Monday what it looks like um, for myself, for them, for everybody. Uh, I said uh, I said something to the effect to our team in the locker room that I'm not sure what else they can give, and they said they got more. So they said it, not me, and um, and we'll we'll see. Coach uh, Micah Kaiser had 18 tackles. <laughs> He's hobbling around out there, but what kind of performance did it look like he had? I mean, he's he's hurt, and um, I, I don't know if he were to run a forty right now in relation to when he's healthy versus today. Um, but it, it's not close, and he just he just won't he won't come off the field. He will not come off the field, and uh, I'm not going to make him. And just his presence alone makes everyone else feel like they're capable. So. Um, he's really, really tough. And um, we rely on him in more ways than he'll ever know. Um, but he is the voice of our program, and he's the heart of our program. Anything else? Thank you, everybody. Thanks,